Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you once again this evening in your presence. So speak to us, minister to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. When I came in, and uh, I was listening to the songs which were being sung, sang here. And I don't know how many of you paid attention to it. One song, more and more, again and again, they repeated the love of God. Love of God around. Remember the song we sang? Love of God. Love for God. Love of God. Love is the one word which is everyone in the world they want. Love. Why? Because it started with God. Love started with God. God's desire to bless everyone. That's his desire. When Joshua was, he was saying, his desire for human being, for his creation, is to be blessed. No one in the world can say, I don't want to be blessed. Tell me. Everyone in this world would say, yes, bless me, Lord. Blessings. One man, let us turn with me, Psalm 91. Psalm 91. It's a Psalm of Moses. Yes, it is Psalm of Moses. Psalm 90 and 91 is believed to be written by Moses. And when Moses is writing the Psalms, he knows what he's writing. Christianity is not a religion. Remember I told you? It's an experience. We are not talking something which we have learned in theological college. Christianity we experience in our heart and we know what we are talking about. It's an experience. When, we, when I say Jesus loves me, I've experienced his love. When I say God blessed me, I know what is to be blessed. When I say God has forgiven me, I know what it is to be forgiven. And I tell you, a believer, born again person knows I am born again. If someone asked you, Joshua, you have been born in this world, what will be your answer? I think so. Maybe I'll have to ask my father, Will that be the answer? I know, of course, I have been born in this world. It's the same thing when you are born again. It's the same thing when you are forgiven. You know it. I am forgiven. I have been born again. I am forgiven. Amen. You know it. And beloved, that's what it is being a Christian. I know what I believe. Psalm 91, when Moses wrote this psalm, he knew what he was talking about. And God's desire is to bless us. Each one of us. He doesn't want his children to have the air conditioned shirt and pant. Nowadays, they have air conditioned. Tone here, hole here, hole there. Have you seen that? Air conditioned? Everywhere. Holes. No, I think God wants us to have 
good clothes, right? I saw met one man in train one day and he was having all his holes everywhere. I said, probably you love so much you love the jeans, you have so much holes in the pants and you love so much that you want to even wear it now. He said, uncle, it's very expensive one. I said, oh, so more holes, more expensive. God wants us to be blessed. Psalm 91, as I said, whole chapter, it's a chapter of blessings. Just one verse I want to read this evening. Verse 14. Read verse 14. See what it says. Huh? Hmm. Because he has set his love upon me. He has decided to love me. Because he has made up his mind to love me. I'm going to deliver him. It doesn't say because he has paid his tithes, I'm going to deliver him. It doesn't say because he comes to regular church, I'm going to deliver him. It doesn't say because he gives donation, I'm going to deliver him. Because he sings beautiful song, I'm going to deliver him. Because he had decided to love me. Because he had decided to respond to my love, which I have for him, I'm going to deliver him. Hallelujah. Beloved, only two things God wants from us to do for him. He wants to do everything. Only two things. And one is, he said, because he had set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I'll put him on high because he knows my name. Because he has set his love. He has decided to love me. I will deliver him. That means everyone is under boundaries. Some kind of boundaries. If some, everyone in the world, and that's why Bible says all have sinned. Some kind of, sometimes we don't realize that we have got addicted to something, something is binding, something. And we need deliverance, beloved. And God says, just because you have responded to my love, I will deliver you. And if I put it in other words, because you have loved him, love for him, because you love him, you will be delivered. Hallelujah. See, you got to speak to yourself. I am going to deliver. I am going to be healed. I am going to be provided because I have set my love upon Jesus. Amen. Because you have, he says, I don't want love. Peter He said, Lord, I'm going to die for you. I'm ready to die for you. I'll leave everything and follow you. Okay. We know what happened. Denied three times. Jesus asked him, Peter, do thou love me? Yes, Lord. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Do you love me? We, we know the whole context. You know what Jesus was saying? Peter, I can make you the biggest fish merchant in the world. Remember in one day how much fish they caught? I can make you the biggest fish merchant in the world. Will you love me more than that? See, God is ready to bless us, beloved. He is ready to heal us, deliver us, provide everything for us. He says, but will you love me? More than your house, more than your car, more than your business, more than your job. Will you love me? That's where, again, evaluation comes. What is my motive behind loving God? What is my motive behind? You read the Bible. If I ask you, why do you read Bible? You'll say, because I'm a Christian. Some said, 
Oh, because it's the word of God. Some said, oh, we must read so, you know, we'll become wise. Some said, well, well, it's, it's, blesses me. it's a very blessing to read the scripture. I asked once, and six-year-old girl said, uncle, I read my Bible because I love Jesus. Beloved, read, sing, pray, come to the church because you love him. Don't just come to the church because if I don't come, Pastor Moses will call me and say, I didn't see you on Sunday. Where were you? No. Do anything because you love him. We got to just, I'm just putting some thoughts in your mind. Why do we come to church? Why we read Bible? Why we sing song? Because just we get excited? Or because I feel nice? No, I sing it because I love him. Love him. Do anything you do for him only out of love. It's possible to do things without loving God. It's possible. It's possible to read Bible, go to Bible college. It's possible to do the social work, feed, feed people, distribute blankets. It's possible to do it without loving him. With a wrong motive. Have you seen people giving blanket and cameraman is ready there? Take this picture. I'm doing some social work. Don't do it. God will not be pleased. Do anything you are doing. Do it because you love me. Yes. Hallelujah. Beloved, that's why we need to check our motive. Why I am doing things. The saints in the Old Testament, saints in the New Testament, saints in the world, they did not serve God with the wrong motive. They had clear cut, because I love you, I'm ready to be burnt alive. I love you, Lord. Because the Savior who asked us to love him, he has loved us first. Amen. He loved us first. Reading Bible, it's God's love letter. Have you read love letters? Now there's no love letters. <laughs> All SMS or my what, 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 I don't know. So many. But here is the love letter. How do you read? This is the letter from my love. Jesus. See the attitude. God's word. With whom I'm going to spend eternity. It's his word. Because you have set your love upon me, I am going to deliver you. And let me guarantee. If you have decided in your mind, you are going to love Jesus at any cost. Deliverance is waiting for you. Healing is waiting for you. Provision is waiting for you. Protection is waiting for you. Any time when your love for Jesus is beloved, he is right there for you. He knows to take care of his beloved. Am I beloved of Jesus? Respond. Because you have decided to love me, I am going to deliver you. And I tell you, make up your mind. At any cost, I am going to love him. At any cost, I will Love him. And he will deliver me. Motive. As I said, it's possible to do things without loving. Don't do if you don't love him. Sing song, worship, dance, love. Because he says, I will deliver you. You don't have to be under bondage. 
He don't have to live under fear. He don't have to live under anything, any curse. If you just say, I'm going to love him unconditionally. And the result will be, he will deliver you, provide for you, he'll be with you unconditionally. Second part, I will put him on high because he knows my name. I'll put him on high. <coughs> Let me, I said this morning, your position is not there. You have been promoted from son of man to son of God, sinner to the saints. You have been promoted. You have to accept that. It's very difficult to accept that I am forgiven because Satan will come again and again and he'll tell you in your mind, he'll, he'll whisper in your ear, say, no, you're not forgiven. Well, no, nothing has changed. It's in the same situation. You've got to turn around and say, you are a liar. I am forgiven. I was sinner. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Beloved, the problem is not there. Problem is here. As I said this morning, we sing that song. What a friend we have in Jesus. Friend of Jesus. We are friend of Jesus. How many of us? We really live like a friend of Jesus. How many of us walk like a friend of Jesus? How many of us behave like friend of Jesus? We don't. Second part, I will put him on high. Let me tell you, if you go to Uttarakhand, where I come from, Dehradun, and if you are traveling in the train or in bus, and if you say you are a Christian, you may be having nice suit and coat or jacket or clothes, very nice, and people will be in dirty clothes, but the soon they hear you are a Christian, they will sit like this. Little bit, they will keep the distance. You know, because they think Christians are low people, downcast people. But that's not true. That's not true. The moment you are washed in the blood of Christ, you are white like snow. Holy people. Royal priest. You've got to believe it. You have been forgiven. See the confidence we need to have. I don't know whether I told you, once I went for a prayer meeting in a place called Khandala. Have you heard of a place called Khandala? It's near Mumbai. It's a hill station. Khandala. So we went for prayer. It was the place was called place was called Jesus and Mary House of Prayer. So we used to fast whole day and eat in the evening. Whole day was fasting. All leaders, new life leaders. So in the evening, I took my plate and took rice and dal and some vegetable, and I came and I, I saw one man coming in a simple shirt pant, and I said, "Come, brother, come, take it." That's how we talk. He said, I'm not brother, I'm father. So I said, how many children you have? See, I was a new Christian, only one month old. It's July, I came to know the Lord. This happened in September. So I said, how many children you have? He was so furious, he looked at me. Okay, I said, I don't know what happened to him. I took my plate and came to the table and sat. And then this man followed me. I said, come brother, sit. He said, I told you I'm not brother. I'm father. I'm a priest. <laughs> See, he was not in the night gone. How will I understand? I thought father means all. So, he sat. I said, you are priest. I'm royal priest. He said, what? What? 
What's your name? Rambali Singh. Eh? Are you Christian? Of course. Take out my Bible. John 1, 12. All those who received him, accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. 1 Peter 2, 9. He's the royal priest, chosen people, holy nation, people belonging to God. You are just a priest. I'm a royal priest. I was only two months old Christian. This man, three days, I kept sharing the gospel with him. When I was coming from there, when we finished, he came to me. He said, I want to become like you. I said, no, you need to become like Jesus. Man, if you are a sincere seeker, God makes the way. We should know what we believe. We should know. I know my Savior is alive. I know my Savior lives today. I will put you on high because you know my name. Do you know his name? Do you know him? His name is Jesus. He says, you have exalted your word. We know prime minister. Does prime minister know me? See, we know about prime minister. See, it's important. Just It should be two ways. I know Jesus. I read about him. How much we know? I don't know whether you have read that book called Knowing God by J.I. Packer. If you find somewhere, you should read it. Excellent book I've come across. J.I. Packer, Knowing God. How much we know our God? How much we have seen? How do you know God? How do you know a person when you live together? I know my wife very well. Even in the crowd, she will be talking. I'll, you know, immediately I'll know my wife is there. I've lived for 32 years together. I'll know her voice. I don't know now, you'll find there used to be radio, older days, and when you tune the radio, there used to be a fine tuning. When you fine tune, the sound was clear. Sometimes we need to fine tune our ear. Not only loving God, knowing God. How much we know our Savior? How much you know about him? How big our God is, how much you know about the greatness of God, holiness of God, the power of God, how much we know him. He is not, Jesus is not just one of the great men in the world. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Know him. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. I want to love you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. How much we love him? How much we know him? The greatest thing. What is our motive, beloved? How much we know our Savior? And just these two things, because you said I'll de I've decided to love you and I want to know you more and more. See what it says. Verse 15. Read verse 15, please. Amen. Because you have set your love upon him and you have decided to know him, you have decided to love him, whenever you call, he is ready to answer you. My prayer will be answered. Your prayer will be answered. Tell your neighbors, remind them, tell them, your prayer will be answered. Beloved, this is not something we, we have to say. My prayer will be answered. I will be answered. My God, because I have set my love upon him. There's no big theology in this. 
simple because you have decided to love him, you have decided to know him, he says, I will answer your prayers. Satan will deceive you many times. Nobody is listening to your prayer. It's only in this hall that you pray. No, that's not true. My prayer is reaching heaven. Because I have set my love upon Jesus. Because I know him. Maybe you know this story about the concert where one man was singing a song. Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And when he sang that song, everybody said, once more, once more, clap, once more. Again he sang, again once more, again once more. People were mad about it. Then the anchor stopped and said, anybody else wants to sing a song? One old man came and said, I want to sing. Come. He sang the same song. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Nobody clapped, nobody once more. One thing happened. Everybody was wiping the tears. Everybody was crying. So this was the moment. Everything changed. And then the anchor asked the first one, singer, what is the difference? When you sang, everybody said once more, clapped again and again. Now when this man sang, not even proper tune, but everybody is crying. He said, there is a difference. The difference is, I know the song, but he knows the shepherd. I know the song, but he knows the shepherd. Beloved, it's not enough to know the song, how much you know the shepherd. How much you know your Savior? How much you know your Lord? And then when the song and the message will come out, it will transform people. Because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you. I'll put you on high because you know my name. God is not happy the place you are. He wants to promote you. He wants to put you on high. Your place is not there. That had been Satan's lie. You will not change. You will remain here. It's not true. You will change. You will be promoted. You will be. I will be with him in trouble. Verse 15. Because you have set your love upon me. Because you have decided to know me. I will be with you in trouble. <laughs> that trouble is the one time when everybody leaves you. You give party, feed people, everybody will be with you. The moment you are in trouble, I don't know him. Who is he? But there is one person who says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Because you have decided to love me, I will prove my love till end. Hallelujah. He loves you because you love him, because you know him, he will be with you in the trouble. I assure you that 39 years I have seen his hand. 39 years I have been walking with him. Many times I tried to leave his hand. I wanted to get away when the situation came. Problem came and how many times you have felt enough? I don't want to go to church. Enough. I had so much problem. God even forgot about me. Nobody cares for me. Let me tell you, you are not holding God's hand. God is holding your hand. If I was holding his hand, I would have run away. Thank God he is holding my right hand. Even if I want to go, I cannot go away. I cannot. Beloved, many times you wanted to go away and still you are sitting in the church because God was holding your hand. I will be with him in trouble. Now, read once again 15, please. Huh? Honor. Your honor is coming. Hallelujah. 
you are going to be honored. I am not saying it's a prophetic word. It's here. Already said it. You are going to be honored. God is going to honor you. Maybe world has despised you. Your family despised you. Your friend has despised you. But you are going to be honored in the sight of the people, in the sight of the world, in the sight of God. God is going to honor you. You will receive your honor. Beloved, because you have decided to love him and you have decided to know him better than yesterday. Hallelujah. Verse 16. With long life. How long? 120 years? 130 years? How long? I will satisfy him. Do you know what is satisfaction? What is satisfaction? Oh, enough. Ek chapati aur? One more roti? No, enough. Stomach full. Satisfied. That's how God has satisfied. You don't need any more. You have been satisfied with eternal life. Eternal life. And then what he says, I will satisfy him with long life and I'll show him my salvation. Salvation. You are going to meet your salvation. Jesus is not only our savior. He is our salvation. I don't want to go to heaven because it's a silver street and golden pillars. It is in heaven. But I don't want to go for that. I want to go heaven, go to heaven because my savior lives there. My Jesus is there. Hallelujah. Your savior, your salvation is there. And I'll see Jesus face to face. This is the great hope, beloved. And all this will happen because you have decided to love him. Hallelujah. We have this because you decided to love him. And you have decided to know him. This is, again I say, examine your life. Evaluate your life. Christian life is a very serious matter. If you want to become blessings for the Lord, he will satisfy you with eternal life. If you want to become satisfaction for the world, it's a costly affair. It's a costly matter. You have to die. Die. Loving God means dying for God. Knowing God. You want to know him, confess him. That means finishing you. You are no more known. No more promotion for Rambali Singh. It's going to be Christ. I said this morning. On 31st of December last year, I got a phone call from Denmark. Hello, can I speak to Brother Rambali Singh Azad? I, I said, what happened? By the then the phone was cut. Suddenly I got a phone call from Bombay. Hello, can I speak to Rambali Singh? What happened? He's dead. He died. Huh? Suddenly I got a phone call from Uti. Hello, Ram Azad. I said, yes, what happened? I heard you are dead. This happened to me. I said, I'm dead. I said, I'm so sad, sorry to know that even in this 21st century, 20th century, communication is so poor. I died 39 years ago, and now the news is reaching to you. I died 39 years ago. Now the news is reaching. He said, you are still alive? I said, you are sad about it? You are not happy? So many phone calls. I don't know who spread the rumors. I said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Yeah. Beloved, you want to be 
satisfaction person for the world. You want to satisfy the world. You know what? Have you seen chapati? Roti? How many of you have had roti? Let me see your hand. Wow. Everyone. Everyone. Give my bag here, please. Yes, just give it to me. You know how the chapati is made? Let me tell you the story. It will take only a few minutes. It starts with a wheat, a small wheat, goes in the ground, dies. Identity finished. If you want to be blessings for the world, listen carefully. You have to die, finish your identity. Otherwise, what? Finish your identity. Then what happens? It grows out. New plant comes, greenery comes. God the Father gives the water, gives the oxygen, and it starts growing. Once it grows, you have a lot of many grain comes. One grain? Mita do apni hasti ko agar kuch martava chaho. कि दाने खाक में मिलकर गुले गुलजार होते यू डोंट हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड उर्दू काजल कैन ट्रांसलेट दिस यू आफ्टर सम टाइम व्हाट हैपन डाइज मल्टीग्रेन देन द वीट इज हैप्पी ओ फॉर वन आई हैव बिकम मेनी नॉट इनफ वीट इज रेडी Harvested, painful, brought in the field. I don't know how many of you have seen the early days, but you know when it was the four or three ox will walk around on the wheat to shift, to clean. Whole day they would walk on. Being crushed by the under the feet of that animal, ox. How painful! But you want to become blessings to the world. Go through that. The process of Christianity, discipleship. I'm talking about. When you do that, wheat is happy. Okay, I have come in original form again. Okay. One wheat became many. That's how it is. You can count the seed in one apple, but you cannot count the apple in one seed. You don't know how many apple can come out from one seed. How many wheats? Wheat is happy. Wheat is taken home, cleaned, washed. Okay, I had good bath. Very good now. Now wheat, you are dried in the sun again. Heat sun. Now put in the bag. Going to the mill has to be made flour. Again, crushed under the mill. Two stones. Painful process. Disciple of Christ. This is the process of discipleship. Crushed. Again, identity finished. It's no more call, called wheat. It's become flour, atta. No marginos. And they all mix together. No identity. He was a Brahman or he was a Kshatriya or he was a Shudra. They have all become one. There's nobody Western, Eastern, African. They are all one. Once you accept Christ Jesus washed in the blood of the Lamb, your identity it's in Christ alone and you are just a believer. Hallelujah. Okay. Now flower is ready. I'm happy. At least I have gone through. Not yet. Process is still going. Then again put water in it. Sometimes hot water also. Mixing the flower. After mixing have you seen doing that? Mukhi. Okay. 
and then rolling pan. My wife made roti yesterday. There was no rolling thing. She used glass. The roti was ready. Now roti is happy. I'm looking round and nice. Wait a minute. Pan is getting hot now. Process is still on. And now the chapati goes in the pan. Hot. Even your foot gets on the feet gets on the hot rod or something. You jump like a frog. And here is in the pan, hot pan. Both side. And not only that, take the pan out. And sometimes I've seen people putting the roti direct on the fire. Have you seen that? Then it's ready to be go, to be eaten by people. And when that thing happens, and then I think I have one small, this one here, roti, it becomes I made this morning. This can satisfy. But did you see the process? Roti looks good. But the process, that's the Christian discipleship. If you love the Lord, if you know him, you have decided to love him, you've decided to know him, you have to go through this process before you become you want to satisfy the world, beloved? You want your life to become blessings for the world? Go through this process. Your life has to be a blessing. Lord, I'm ready to go through the process. Make me a blessing. I want to love you. I want to know you. I've set my love upon you. Beloved, check your motive. How much you know him? How much you knowing him? How much you have desired to know him? How closely what I knew one month earlier, am I knowing him better today? Have I come closer to him now? Whatever I do, am I doing because I love him? Check your motive. Or I do things just to get some clap some glory or I do things. Serve him. Preach the gospel. I have to evaluate my own life. Why I'm standing here. What is the motive behind? To love God or is there something else? Close our eyes. Every one of us, close. Close our eyes. And we are not looking to one another. We are here to evaluate our life. I don't know. When Lord brings me here, I'll meet you or I'll not meet you. But surely I'll see you in heaven. But before that, I want you to be true to yourself. Be honest to yourself. Is your motive right? Check your motive. Do you love God? with the right motive. Have you decided to love him at any cost? Unconditionally. Do we have desire to know him better than yesterday? Is your prayer, Lord, I want to know you better every day. I want to close. I want to love you without any other motive, Lord. Just I want to love you because you have loved me. Beloved, every eye is closed. We are not looking to one another. We are not here to judge anyone. We are here to look into our own life and check our own life. And if Lord has spoken to you and your motive has not been clear, you have been not knowing God as you should have been. You are not loving God as you should have been. This is the time to make decisions saying, I'm going to love God unconditionally. I'm going to know him more. This is the time to make a decision and make a prayer. Lord, I want to love you. I want to know you better. And if you have prayed, I want me to pray for you. 
to become and ready to face the process of her discipleship. Ready to say, I want to become a better disciple who loves God, Christ unconditionally. I want to pray for you if you show me your right hand. Wherever you are, I'm going to pray for you. Immediately. Thank you. Thank you so much. No waiting. Thank you. Those who raise the hand, stand up. 